Hey, welcome everybody. Eugene here, Hughes Motorized. This thing's got a motor on it. That's what we're here to talk about today. The fine folks at High Boy, they make e-bikes, e-scooters and the like. They contacted me. They asked me to do a review of their Ecom 14 scooter. And yeah, I said yes, because that's what we're looking at here. What is an Ecom 14 scooter? It's a cool little grocery getter is what, what my mind comes up with. So let's do a quick trip to the grocery store. Now remember, one of the perks of being a big time YouTube reviewer is you get to get your hands on prototypes. Now this is a very special prototype. It's not ready for the public yet. It's got a little goodie in it called hyperspeed. And I'm going to kick this thing into hyperspeed and we're going to go really fast to the grocery store. We're going to go in the grocery store, grab a few things. We're on the way back and guess what? Before you know it, we're running back to the house. Not just kidding about the hyperspeed here. But yeah, it's a cool little grocery getter. It does the job. It's fun. Like it's a little commuter scooter. It's not so much for tearing through the neighborhood. You can zip along at 22 miles an hour. That's a cool aspect about it. It's got some speed on it. You've got the seat. You put your little tushy on it. Go riding around. Like I said, you can grab you some groceries on it. Uh, it's collapsible. Uh, you've got a 450 watt motor here that'll get you up to 22 miles an hour. You have a, a bigger and a higher voltage battery in a lot of the, uh, the more discounted scooters. Here you've got a 48 volt 10 amp hour battery and that'll get you 31 miles of range. Uh, providing you're not uh, so uh, you know heavy like me or whatever. They say 150 pound rider riding you know mid range on it here will get about 31 miles range. So what you've got the disc brake on the rear, you have a hub brake on the front. Like I said, it collapses. So let's go, let me show you what you do to collapse it here. Unscrew the knob here, it pulls out, it's spring loaded. The seat comes off. You can collapse the steering assembly here. You've got a release here. And if you notice on the left hand side here where the latch assembly is, You'll see how it works. You've got on the right hand side, you push up with your thumb or your finger, and then that re releases the lock. You pull the latch forward, and that will allow the handlebars to go down. To make it a little bit more compact, you can collapse the basket. The front flap goes down, the left flap goes down, the right flap goes down, the rear one goes down, and it's got a little latch on it that will hold it in place. This guy here will fit in the rear end of my little Fiat 500, and there's not a lot of room back there, so this guy here will definitely fit. This guy here can replace your car if you just, you know, want to use it to get your little groceries. Okay, so the scooter came with the basket removed, with the seat pad off of the, uh, the seat assembly here, the stem was collapsed, the handlebar was removed from the, from the stem, the front wheel was removed. So the first thing I did was uh, get the handlebars on. You raise up the, the, the stem and it latches into place. It's, it's pretty easy to do here. And then you've got two screws here that hold the handlebars into place. The scooter comes with all the tools that you need to assemble everything. Um, so you're, you're not going to be uh, in a bind if you don't have any tools. It comes with everything you need. I found the screws rather hard to get down all the way. I'm not saying that's a bad thing, but you want to be careful not to break the screws. If it starts to get real hard, back the screws up, push it, run it back in, pull it out, in and out, slowly work the screws down to where you get the handlebars firmly clamped into place here. You've got a clamp that goes here that holds the cable assembly out of harm's way. And then you've got the latch here, so we'll just go ahead and raise the stem into position, lock that into place. Now, I found it easier to put the front wheel on. I did it all by myself, all by my lonesome here. I turned the scooter upside down, and you want to orient. You've got the forks here. Get the forks headed in this straight position. No, no turning of the handlebars here. And uh, like I said, I did it upside down. You have the drum assembly that goes into the, the wheel and the drum area of the wheel, and uh, you push that in. You've got a little post here on the front fork 
that mates up with the, with the little holder here on the hub assembly that locks the hub into position when you hit the brakes it doesn't spin on you. You want to make sure you get the wheel assembly oriented completely straight with relation to the forks and the center line of the scooter. Then you can put the axle in. You've got a flat washer that, that goes on both sides of the forks. You've got the two acorn nuts. Tighten it up with the supplied wrenches. You want to get it good and snug. You don't want to get it super human tight, but you want to get it good and snug so that there's no chance of them coming off here. I then put the seat onto the seat pad, the uh, seat panel here. You've got three screws here that come out from the seat and you have nylock nuts, hex nuts that go on it. There are six millimeter threads. You need a 10 millimeter wrench. That's included with the, the kit. I went ahead and used my uh, quarter inch ratchet because the, the nylock nuts, they're highly desirable for an application like this here, but they're a little bit hard to turn. I found it would be a lot quicker using my ratchet, so I used my ratchet. The seat has one, two, three, four positions that you can put it on. Put that into place. Put the post in. And then you have to pull out and then feel it where it goes into the first position or whatever position you'll find comfortable for, for riding. And then you tighten up the black knob here and that locks everything into position. You've got the screws here on the back for the basket. Screw those down. They're, they could have put just a little bit longer screws in it, but take your time. Just slowly work them in. Just get them started. Then once you get all the screws into position, then tighten them on down and you're good to go. The charging port is on the left-hand side. It's basically right here underneath the, the, the footboard here on the left-hand side. Got a water-resistant plug on it. You open the plug. Put your charger in. It takes four to six hours to get a full charge from a completely dead battery. I haven't uh, tested that aspect of it, but I have no reason to suspect that, that that's not what you're going to find here. Give it a good charge. You want to make sure that your tires are inflated to 45 PSI. The more inflated the tires are, the less rolling resistance you're going to have, and that's going to help you with your range, and as well it'll help you with the speed. Now, in riding this here, it's a great little grocery getter, like I said. I rode this thing into my local grocery store, used the basket. Let's open this up here. Now, you want to be careful when you open the basket. It's spring-loaded, okay? So grab the, the rear flap here and just pull it up, and it pops open. You don't want to have your nose or your eyeballs in there. You may get a little surprise, get a little bump on the nose there. Like I said, I brought this into the grocery store. I used this as my shopping basket. Or if you want, go get a pizza with it. You can throw you a bottle of wine, a 12-pack of some beverages there. Get you some bungee cords, pop you a pizza on there. This is a cool little commuter scooter. If you want, it's not really an off-road type scooter because it would have suspension. It's not designed for that. Uh, one thing with the, the battery here, this is a 48-volt, 10-amp-hour battery. So they say it's good for up to 31 miles of range, and that's for a 150-pound rider. I ran it about 12 miles or so, and I was going full throttle all the way, and the battery indicator only went down about halfway. So I, I suspect that their, uh, their range estimates are, are fairly accurate. Scooter has a head, headlight and a tail light. To activate the headlight, you press on the up button for a couple of seconds. And the headlight assembly comes on as well. The rear taillight assembly comes on. When you pull in on the brake lever, the taillight will flash. 22 miles an hour is the top speed of it. The computer on it has gears, quote unquote. You've got, when you first turn it on, you've got the up and down button. You press the down button, that brings it to a lower gear. Gear number one is good for about nine miles an hour. Gear number two, 16 miles an hour. Gear number three, 22 miles an hour. I was hitting 22 miles an hour on this here. Full charge. Um, I'm using an unscientific method from a complete stop. I used the thumb throttle on it. I counted 1,001, 1,002. I got up to 14 and I was going 22 miles an hour on it. So I did a couple of runs. 
like I said, 14, 12, 13 seconds is what I found from a complete stop to get me up to 22 miles an hour. The pneumatic tires on it absorbs the shock of some of the bumps. This isn't an off-road scooter. If you want it more for, you know, tearing through the neighborhood, you're not so interested in the commuter aspect, you can remove the seat assembly. You've got one, two, three, four screws. You can pull the seat assembly off and make it just a stand-up scooter. This is ideal for those of you who might even be thinking about not using a car, just commuting on something like this here. And that can save you a good bit of money and you get to feel the wind in your hair, okay? Well, with your helmet on too, all right? So to turn the scooter on, you have the power button. You're going to long press on the power button. It will light up, it will say hello. You can select your gear speed. If you press both the up and the down button on it, long hold it, it will then give a code for P. Now, P1 is then when you can use the up and down arrow, you can adjust the brightness of the display. You then press the power button again and you go to P2 and you can then use the up and down, the up and down button to change between miles or kilometers as well. The uh, P5 is where you can adjust the cruise control. If you want to turn the cruise control on, that way when you use the thumb throttle, you're holding a steady speed for several seconds. You can then release the throttle and it will maintain that speed until you hit the thumb throttle again or apply the brakes and it turns everything and it shuts it down to no throttle. The directions are pretty easy. Tell you everything you need to know about setting it up, charging it, and then all you got to do is ride it. I had a lot of fun riding this here. So I give this a thumbs up. I'll put a link down below where you can buy direct from High Boy as well. High Boy sells through Amazon. If you found the video helpful, give me a thumbs up. You got that subscribe button. I got more to come.